What's up, Dan Blewett here, and let's talk about when to actually move your outfielders and infielders because of a previous at bat by a hitter. So one thing I see when I'm out coaching youth baseball is, say one of my guys hits a ball down the left field line in his first at bat. Next time he comes up, the other team goes, hey, came your way next time. Shortstop's like, hey, go, go towards the line. Hey, move, move, move. This is really misguided because Number one, in the big leagues, they need large data sets to really have an understanding of what a hitter's actual tendencies are. Okay, so here's a hypothetical for you. So, say you have an alien visit you in your home, all right? And you're both sitting on the porch and you watch your neighbor walk out of his house and he goes, he walks to the post office and then he comes back 10 minutes later, goes in the house. You know your neighbor. You know he doesn't walk to the post office every day, but today he did. Now your, your alien friend, who it's his first time on earth and his first time in your home, he right now has only been on earth one day and he's seen your neighbor walk to the post office and back on that one day. For you, you know that your neighbor only goes to the post office once in a while. Your alien friend might say, wow, your friend, does he go to the post office every day? He could assume maybe because the only time he's ever seen him, he's gone to the post office, that maybe he does. Maybe every day that's part of his routine that he w- wakes up, walks out of the house, goes to the post office and comes back. But you know better that he only does that once in a while, right? So as hitters in baseball, we can't judge one at bat and call that a hitter's tendencies. So just because a hitter flew out to left and is a first at bat, I'm not going to move my outfielders and pull them to the line and, and shade my infielders over all based on one at bat. Maybe it was just that that pitcher threw my pitcher or my hitter a curveball, and so he was out in front and just happened to hook it down the line for a double. Next time, if the, hit, if the pitcher throws me heaters or my hitter heaters, I might be hitting one in the opposite field gap. It's just way too small of a sample. There's way too many variables going on to figure out, okay, well, Um, How do we know that's actually his tendency? How do we know he's actually pulling the ball a lot? How do we know it's actually in our best interest to move our fielders over there, right? So as I sketch out here, I'll make a a nice crude baseball field for you. Um, Here's our infield. Here's our outfield. So look, we put our infielders in their standard spot, right? Here's our shortstop. Here's our third baseman. Here's our second baseman. Here's our first baseman. Here's our pitcher, our catcher, this is the worst field ever. And our uh, outfielders are in their standard spots, right? So say in the, again, that first at bat, and God, this field looks terrible. Say in that first at bat, my guy sprays one down the line this way. But it was, again, it maybe was a curveball, or maybe it was an inside fastball, and that was the only place he could put it by getting the barrel on it. Now, a lot of my competition, and you know, they say, okay, well, it came your way this next time. Well, now, guess what happens? They, they shift their outfielders around, and now they put their left fielder way over here, their center fielder's way over here, and their right fielder's way in the gap. Sure, that gap is covered pretty well, but now, you know, your pitcher makes a good, uh, good pitch, jams my guy, and he hits a blooper all the way over here and it falls in, now he gets another double because this guy was so far out of position that he had no chance of getting there. So the moral of this story is this. In the major leagues, they know that it takes a large sample size of at-bats before we can really tell if a hitter has strong tendencies or not. It takes a long, a, like 500 bats before we can tell if a hitter can even hit lefties or, or he can't hit righties or whatever. The platoon shift, which is what, you know, can the guy hit lefties or righties or not one or not the other, that takes a long time to figure out. So when you're coaching or when you're a player, don't be quick to rush to judgment to say, hey, center fielder, go way back. He hit it over your head last time. Does a guy go four for four with four doubles over your center fielder's head in a game? Probably not. So would he cr- if he crushed a ball in the, first, uh, in the first at bat? It doesn't mean we need to send our outfielders back to the track because then we're going to let bloopers drop in. We're going to let routine singles drop in, right? So if you look back here at this ugly baseball field, the uh, you know guy drives one deep over the outfielder's head, and now suddenly the next at bat, we've moved everyone back, and so now everyone's here because we're afraid because this guy hit a, a deep drive last time. Now we're afraid, and you know what happens? 
a blooper drops in, another blooper drops in, you know, another blooper drops in. So we've got to make sure we're making smart decisions based on reality and not just jumping to the conclusion that because someone did something one time, they're going to do it again with reliability the next time, right? Just because a pitcher throws his first fastball up, does it mean he's going to throw the next four up? Not necessarily. Just because the pitcher throws a first pitch curveball to the first batter of the game, does that mean he's going to throw a first pitch curveball to every batter? We don't jump to that conclusion either. But with defensive positioning, a lot of times players and coaches quickly jump to the conclusion that because they did this last time, it somehow is indicative of what might happen next time. Now, if you're playing in a tournament and it's, you know, you've played this team a couple of times or you're on Game Changer and you've looked at his spray chart and his spray chart maybe looks something like this where it's like tons of stuff to the left side and only once in a while ball to the right side. Sure, that's a good cause to actually shift. But again, you need to have a decent sample size that's gonna give you some sort of reliable information to say, yeah, this guy actually pulls the ball in most situations with most pitchers, even though some pitchers throw harder than others, some pitchers throw better breaking stuff than others, etc. cetera. Um, you've gotta have a good reason to start shifting, okay? So I hope this quick tutorial was helpful. Again, defensive positioning can be really important and it could lose a game or win a game for you. So you just wanna make sure you don't make hasty judgments based on a really small sample of a hitter's tendencies, okay? So if you enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe, share with a friend, and I'll see you in the next one.